around you, you'll see everybody's different. They're all grown from seed. So if you wanted to replicate yourself, you'd have to take yourself as a cutting, probably. Um, but it's all about genetics. So when we're replicating any of those individual varieties, you've got to do it from cuttings or grafting, but it's a form of vegetative reproduction. It's not a sexual reproduction. So it's not nothing to grow from seed. Even though they originally grew from seed, to replicate them, you've always got to um, reproduce things vegetatively. The best way of doing it with uh, fruit trees or any other tree for that matter, one of the best ways is to um, use a rootstock. Now, the rootstock was used even way back in, in Roman times. That was when there was grafting was first used because they realized they had to replicate uh, varieties that way. So the technique is very old, but the rootstocks we use are actually quite new. And I'm talking about in the last hundred years. So the rootstocks themselves impart certain influences on the tree, which is actually quite clever. After the Second World War, when everybody was hungry, they realized that fruit trees in this uh, country and around the world were not productive enough, so they had to increase the productivity. But one of the ways they did this was to use and select certain rootstocks that had influences on the tree. So it might be bigger fruit, uh, disease resistance, heavier yield, size control. Everybody knows that roots not to control the size of trees, but there's lots of other uh, reasons for using it as well. So, before rootstocks were bred themselves, we used to use seedlings. Now, seedlings have tremendous variation, so rootstock gives uniformity to a tree that can produce. We so do it two or three different ways. Um, we either graft in the winter or we'll bud it back in the summer. So in, for winter grafting, uh, we often use rootstocks that are bare root. They're going to have to be in a pot grown. Anybody interested in grafting your own tree, you go out and buy rootstocks from nurseries like us. And uh, one of the most important things is to have a very sharp knife. And we're very lucky in Tenby because we've got a hospital, a very good hospital, not very far away. So when our staff are training and they nick themselves, we can always rush them down to the hospital. We keep, in fact, if it wasn't for Frank Matthews, it wouldn't be a Tenbury hospital, I can assure you. So uh, the principle is, if you, we, we, uh, we'll cut the rootstock off, it comes surface to requirement. And uh, we then have to select a, a piece of wood from a parent tree that we want to propagate. And so I'm going to take something off this tree here, which is uh, Worcester Pearmy. It's autumn, the leaves have come off. And what we do is we cut the, the uh, shoot up into s small bits, like so. And this is what we call one year wood. You have to graft with this season's growth, not the year before. That's very important. And it's a very simple method of carpentry. It's not, it's not complicated, it's not scientific, and all you have to do is be good with a knife. So if you're good with a chisel, you like whittling wood, and you're used to, it's just a, a form of uh, uh, dexterity. And we'll cut the graft wood about that long, a couple of inches. And to make it easy, we've got a little bit of a tongue in the graft wood like so. A similar one, uh, and a similar cut and a similar tongue on the rootstock. And we'll put another little tongue in there like so. And then we shall put the two together, improve the match a little bit like, like that, because it wasn't perfect. And we, we have to do get a thing called cambium contact. It's in the cambium, underneath the bark, is where everything calluses. And if you get those matched between the graft and the rootstock, you'll get a good take. Funny enough, apples is a very easy subject. We all like to think it's difficult, and uh, nobody else can do it. And you have to have lots of skill, but in actual fact, it's relatively easy. Some of the other fruit trees are more, a little bit more difficult. 
So we'll put a little rubber tie on there. In the winter, we'll dip it, we'll turn it upside down and dip it in wax. It's a molten wax that's just around 70, 80 degrees, doesn't burn it, and then that will go and be left, and it'll hopefully grow away. Now, we take the suckers off, we'll, we'll let this bud at the top here dominate the tree, and we'll actually end up with something, I haven't got a one-year tree with me, but you'll see on all fruit trees, as they grow, a little bump in the bottom, or what we call the union, and that's where the rootstock and the bud or graft were made in the first place, just like that. I put this on a little bit higher, just to show you that we can vary the height of the grafting as well. So um, that will remain above ground level, that union, for the rest of the tree's life. And because the variety isn't allowed to root, that only the rootstock is doing the job, you will then have the control over the tree that you want in terms of size and cropping and so on. We have about seven or eight different apple rootstocks, uh, four or five different plums, three or four pears, and they all have different influences, and some varieties are more comfortable on certain rootstocks than 